Hello everyone, I'm on the interchange testing map that Yumble and Biffer have been using lately and on this map Yumble's challenge was to make an at grade intersection without any traffic signals that can handle all the traffic that this map generates and this is what I think I have here. Let me just show you each of the three movements, the left turns, the right turns and the through traffic from all four approaches. Each of these three movements crosses over another movement at one of 12 crossing points that are controlled by yield signs. So let me explain how exactly this works. The basic structure is based around a type of split intersection called a square about or a town center intersection which splits the bi-directional roadway that you usually have up into two one-way couplets. With this design the cars can cross over one direction of traffic and then queue in a space before they have to cross the other direction of traffic. And this solves one of the problems you get when there aren't any traffic signals. You've got multiple lanes of traffic to cross and it can take a long time to get a gap in all the lanes you have to be able to cross. So instead of crossing six lanes at once, you can cross three, then wait, and then cross the other three. The square about does have one downside in that the left turn still have to join with the through traffic and cross at two particular crossing points. In this map and most intersections in real life, the vehicles traveling through the intersection are the most numerous, and so it's these two crossing points that are the biggest problem for any intersection. So what can we do to stop the left turns from adding extra volume at these two crossings? There are two alternative intersections that can deal with the left turns separately from the through traffic. The first and most well known is the displaced left, or continuous flow which moves one of the left turn conflicts to before the main junction and then deals with the other conflict alongside the traffic lights at the main junction. For clarity I've only drawn in one of the left turns here and only for one leg but obviously the full intersection will have all the other turns as well. A less well known but very similar intersection is the parallel flow intersection which has one conflict at the main junction first alongside the traffic signals and then moves the other conflict after the main junction instead of before it. Because I don't have traffic signals to use and synchronize with the turning conflicts, I'm going to have to borrow both these strategies and move the left turn conflicts to both before and after the main junction. I'll do this while also splitting up the main junction into a square about or town center intersection. So that's what one of the left turns will look like. Now I'll show you what all the left turns together will look like. And then we can add in the right turns before all of this to get them out of the way first. And there you have it. I'm calling this the displaced left split intersection. So this intersection has four crossings in the middle as the straight throughs cross over each other one direction at a time. And then two for each of the four left turn movements for another eight, which is 12 crossings in total. So yeah, that's how this works. I'm just going to let the traffic run so you can see it some more. I might actually zoom in and show you how each of the yields give way signs are set up at each of these uh, crossing points. I'm using the uh, internal space of the square about for queuing so that the traffic doesn't always build up and block the other crossing points. Potentially uh, this strategy of displacing the left and right turns before the central intersection would work for a roundabout instead of a square about. If you do try something like that, um, leave a comment, let me know. Just noticed that my western W marker has been damaged, let me just fix that up. So yeah, the overall intersection is pretty large, uh, basically the same footprint as a highway interchange, but of course it's cheaper because it's got no elevated sections. With some refinement I'm sure you could make it much smaller than this, but re realistically you just use a time traffic light here, and then you could make it much smaller and the coordination from the light would allow you to deal with the same level of traffic much more efficiently. I'm just going to let this run for a minute or two more and stop talking. Um, that's all for me today.